sorry I'm late. I um, got distracted over on the live stream for my patron group. Um, we were over there chatting, having a good time. And as you may have surmised by now, I like, I like to talk. So, um, what to do, what to do today was a very busy day. So I haven't, um, I haven't really done a whole lot of prep work regrettably for this Twitch stream. So we're going to kind of wing it today, but next week I promise it'll be, um, it'll be a little bit more, it'll be a little bit more structured next week probably because i'll be busy i think the real problem is that i uh finished i finished the tau commission like late 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 friday night um i finished basing tau commission and uh as a result i really didn't i really hadn't started anything by over the weekend saturday night we had friends over and um saturday night we had friends over and had dinner and played some board games and that was fun so i really didn't i didn't do any painting yesterday i didn't do any hobby painting yesterday so today busy with family and such so really unprepared my apologies so we'll see we're going to kind of wing it and then we'll see how let me see if i can get organized here oops 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 shoot hang on sorry There we go. Okay. Nope, that's not what I wanted. How do I? There we go. Um, scroll down. Perfect. Welcome, 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 welcome. So, what we're gonna do i think i have a thing i have to do in the morning with a tutoring client and then i have to get started on so i think we're going to do some assembly today i don't think we're going to do paint today i think we're going to do assembly uh maybe a little basing love for this competition mini that i want to do by next week Next weekend, I am doubtful that that's going to get done in time. But uh, so we may skip over, we may skip around a little bit. Um, but I don't. It's not that I don't have anything to paint. I definitely have things that I could paint, but I wasn't fully prepared, and I apologize. Won't happen again. So let's see what we can drum up around here to get painted. But uh, tonight it would be nice to get some some of the chat going. A little, little bit of discussion in the chat would be wonderful. It would kind of help me along. Um, I need to figure out how to paint. So basically, I need to figure out how to paint diseased skin. Uh, this kind of bruised, diseased skin, which I'm pretty confident. I know how to do it. I've done it before. Um, but I need to be able to, like, execute it tomorrow. So I need, I need a model to do that, which is going to be, I'm going to use a demon prince for that. And then, yeah, 
you know, why don't we do... Emperor's Spears or Night Haunts? Emperor's Spears, Night Haunts, Emperor's Spears, Night Haunts, Emperor's Spears. I can do that off Twitch. Let's do... Should we do some Emperor's Spears? Should we do some Space Marines? Let's do, uh, let's bang it. Let's, let's, let me just take a quick dip. Let's take a quick dip in Age of Sigmar, shall we? Let's do this. You know what we always do? Let's get into the... Closet of Win over here. And let's... I realize this is horrendous content. Well, let's do this. All right. Oh, what's up, man? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. I was going to do some Night Hunt, but in light of, oh, I was going to do a whole tutorial for you, man. Actually, I can do it real quick. Let me just dial in the, let me just dial in the focus and then, and the color, and then we, I can knock it out real quick. Let me just, uh, yeah, because that looks like, whew, that's not going to be helpful at all. Um, this is not indicative of my usual preparedness. I just want to go out on a limb and say, boom, there we go. And there we go. What time do you leave tomorrow? Why is this so hard? 38 on the game, please. Oh, that's not too bad. 9 a.m.? Why is this so dark here? What is going on here? Well, nice. He's going he's gonna to let you in his house. That's really cool. Tell him, uh... Tell him uh, just how, just how much I love that book. It's so good. Don't mention the next one though. I don't want him to. Why is the gain all the way up? What is going on? I'm sorry, Carl, and everybody else. There we go. That's pretty close to what we're working with today. This is the base coat for my Night Haunt, for those who maybe haven't seen this scheme yet. I was going to knock. Yes, this glove is just so distracting. 
Uh, this thing's cool, man. This is, this is our, our, uh, these are like the little lieutenants. And then there's like the big boss man on the giant, the big boss man on this giant, like undead Pegasus thing is just awesome. Uh, thing I like about these is these will paint up pretty quick. So these are pretty easy to, you know, there's a lot of lighting tricks and then it's basically just like the magenta and then textured robes and some bone and some metallics. And I'm like, done. So that's um, attractive to me. And also I just like the, every single model in that range. I'm like, yeah, I want to paint that. So like this guy, like, look at this guy. This guy is so creepy. So creepy. I love this. I love this stuff. So, let's get our trusty Contemptor Dreadnought. This guy has led a long and a life of long distinguished service. Yeah, the army was, I think the army, like, somebody was like, let's design an army that, that should be airbrushed, and then Night Haunts was what they came up with, because, there we go. Oh boy. We are all over the place today. Okay, so, my long-suffering, long, long-suffering Contemptor Dreadnought, this thing has about 75 coats, probably about 75 coats of paint on this thing, um... This is what I use for color tests when I'm doing when I'm doing new models. Um, when I'm doing a new scheme or I'm trying to figure out trying to figure out, hey, uh, how am I going to paint? How am I going to paint Emperor Spears? How am I going to paint Black Legion? How am I going to paint Thousand Suns? How am I going to paint Alpha Legion? Um, this is the model that I grab and I start, I start wailing on and then I just reprime it because I hate this model. <laughs> I really don't like that model at all. I think it's, it's such a static pose and it's just a bad, I think part of the reason that, or I know part of the reason I dislike Part of the reason I dislike the plastic contemptor. Oh, you're so funny. You're so funny with the barrels, Carl. Um, I don't drill this one out of spite. So just because I don't like this model, I don't drill its barrel. It's personal between me and him. Um, the, the thing about... The thing about this model, and one of the reasons I really don't like this model, is because of how good the Forge World Contemptor kit is, and how versatile the Forge World Contemptor kit is, and how dynamic and beautiful and poseable and paintable the Forge World kit is. And this kit, compared to that kit, is an abomination. So... So this kit becomes my guinea pig, and actually, I'm not going to reprime. I'm going to go back over it with black. So you can use any black. I'm going to use. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to use Vallejo Model Color Black because it dries super matte, um, which is what I want to start. But you can use any. You can use any black, so oh, come on, let's go. On. Yeah, that fa that Facebook live chat was fun. That's why I was so late to I was so late to this chat, this stream. Um, just having too much fun over there on Facebook. Which I don't want to have happen. I do want, I do want to be reliable 
on Twitch, and I do want to stream according to my schedule on Twitch. Um, when I've asked people what's you know what's really important about streaming, they've all said consistency. So uh, it is important for me to be consistent. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a neat, that would be a neat feature. Um, I wonder if there's a way to do that. I don't know. But, um, but one of the things, so I'll just give myself more time to do, so we're just, we're just resetting this one here. Um, I just, next time, I'll just give myself more time to do that. The Facebook live chat. Um, what? What is going on here? Okay. Um, I don't know. Sputtering is not. Okay. But this is just resetting, resetting the model for the 37th time. Um, there we go. What was I saying? Okay, so, oh, um, so you can still see, like, you can still see the Alpha Legion green under there from the time that I painted Alpharius, I think, like, four months ago, maybe? Three months ago? So. What is going on with this nozzle? My goodness. Anyway, so we'll let that dry and I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with my airbrush. Um, so if, if you're watching the stream and you're not on Patreon yet, what I'm talking about is. On Sunday nights, I, so the Patreon, there's a $6 pledge level, and that gets you access to all the Patreon exclusive content. Um, this is just me helping Carl with some paint scheme advice for his Black Legion. Um, he has been waiting patiently like a cultist on a planet in the way of the 13th crusade 13th black crusade biding his time waiting for a black legion release that release has finally come and uh and so carl went ham on on black legion models but is having trouble Deciding on a scheme for the black. Which, when you're painting Black Legion, is kind of important. And it's hard to because... Oh, come on. It's hard to because, like, when you're starting an army, and you're starting... I'm just blowing air on this to try and get, try and get it to dry out faster. Um, I don't necessarily recommend doing that on models that you care about. Um... Because you can push some paint around and you can get some like weird effects, but for for our purposes today, this will do just fine. So when you're when you're starting an army or when you're revisiting an army, that first kind of establishing that color scheme is one of the hardest things, in my opinion, it's one of the hardest things to do in the hobby. Is to is to establish an army scheme, and then then you get to go paint the army. Um, they're hitting with hair dread, those cheaters. Um, I was just thinking that I have a heat gun. <laughs> Uh, 
yeah like i was that's brutal well you know if calls under the heat gun you got to pay attention but um yeah i was thinking i have i have a heat gun but that's for like melting forge world resin um if i tried to use that to thin paint it would just be uh terrain it would become terrain i think so one of uh you're like oh look at what the titan turbo laser did to this contemporary dread um one of the things that's that's so so hard in this hobby is establishing that initial paint scheme for an army um there's a lot of pressure on that decision so um because once it's done, if you paint like three squads and you don't like it, you're SOL. I mean, you're painting, you're repainting. You're either repainting three squads or you're just going to, like you said, you're just going to move it. And neither one of those is a good option. So, um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple different, because it's one of the reasons, so one of the reasons I like, this probably is going to be too much, but we're going to try it. One of the reasons that I like the, and this is just, I'm going through my paint rack here of like my 97 grays that I have. Um, Cause I'm, I'm really big into color and tone and stuff like that. So, um, We're gonna try one of the, one of the reasons I like this contemptor actually the one the one thing that I like about this contemptor is how big it is. Um, so when I'm doing when I'm doing test schemes, I can paint the top part of him one way. I can paint his chest another way. I can paint one of his legs another way. I can paint another leg another way. So I can experiment with four or five different schemes on the same model. So the goal here is to get a really nice black that looks black. It doesn't look gray. It looks black with three colors. That's the goal today. So we're going to try and do that. Um, black being one of the colors so we're not doing two stage airbrush highlights um we're just going to do we're going to do one airbrush highlight we're going to pay a lot of attention to where that airbrush highlight is when we're painting um so that we get the kind of the maximum maximum effect from that airbrush highlight um and then we're going to do an edge highlight a sharp edge highlight and we're going to be done um I've done this on Iron Hands, um, and they looked really good. So they look, and they looked black. They just looked crisp and black. So, um, so that's what we're going to try to achieve today. We're going to try a few different. Um, I think I'm going to try three, three different blacks, kind of in quick su succession. Um, and we're going to see what kind of what those kind of look like. So the first one we're going to do is, so we base coated with the Baleo model color black, which is my go-to black because of how matte it dries. And then we're going to go to Baleo model color black gray. Um, yeah, we're fine. It just seems like that white is really light, but it's under... It's under the, and it has to be light to be able to see this black. So, like, that's pretty true black to what I'm looking at. So, um, black gray. This isn't. This is a really, 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 as you can imagine, a really, really dark gray. Um, and then we're gonna edge highlight that with neutral gray from model color. So this we're not really getting into different color, different filter, different, you know. Um, we're not getting into a lot of subtlety and tone and um, it's going to be a cold black. It's going to be a true black. So this is just going to be black, black, black. If you want black, that's what we're doing right now. We're doing a black. Um, 
the other ones will look black too, but they might look a little bit more gray um, because they're going to have. So the next one we're going to do is going to be a dark gray blue, uh, which is a gray color, which is a color I really like. Uh, we're going to do dark gray blue. And then after that, and then we're going to highlight that with an intermediate blue. And that's kind of a different, it's kind of a different look. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a dark, I think that's good. Um, we're going to do dark panzer gray. Dunkel Grau, which is a panzer dark gray. This is a green gray. This is a funky, this is kind of funky. I don't know how this one's going to work. But, um, but it's really good for, for different things. Um, but I don't know if it's going to work for this because it's not really, it, you'll see, it's a little funky. So I have the highest hopes for the black gray. So we're going to start with that. We're going to paint kind of the upper carapace area. And we're going to highlight just, just like we would if we were painting it for real and we cared about this contemporary dreadnought um, but we don't I'm just giving the contemporary a hard time it's been a good what is going on if my airbrush would start working that would be super helpful I think it's too clean I cleaned it right before Cleaned it right before I came on. I think I went overboard. I think it's too clean. It kind of badgers me to kind of work in a little bit. So, a little bit on the front of the scene in the net. Anyway, put that up in the light. That just looks. It's hard. It's hard to film black. I'm not going to lie. Oh, hey. That was a lot of, that was a lot of black gray. Oh, there we go. I guess whatever was wrong with my airbrush is fixed now. That's good to know. So, now that we obliterated the top of this thing with gray paint, let's move on to the shoulder. And with this one, it's really important like it's really important with this scheme to get you just want to highlight like that much you want to leave most of the panel gray you don't want so like but when we when we kind of tilt it out of direct light like you really can't see like that's a better it's out of focus but that's a better representation of that color gray then like if I'm turning this up to the light and you're like oh wow that's white like it is not it isn't um that's a better representation of that black gray there which is pretty which is pretty good um that looks like doo-doo because we just hose the top of the contemptor down with it um but like there like the shoulder here like that looks pretty good. So we're gonna focus, we're gonna focus on the highlighting on like the the gorget area and then this this shoulder, and we're gonna ignore that mess up there. The and the really nice thing about the nice thing about doing gray this way or doing black this way, excuse me, um, is it is very forgiving. If you make a mistake like that and you hose a model in black gray guess what you just paint it black go back to <laughs> go back to work um, it's a it's a very forgiving method of painting black and it is like this is oh 
That's an Adon question, Carl. Uh, this is Vallejo Model Caller 70.862 Gris Negro. Black Gray. No, so the Panzer Gray is... Oh, this so Panzer Gray isn't even dark Panzer Gray. Or German Gray. I love German Gray. German Gray is one of my favorites, but not for this. Um, yeah, no, this is a model air, so you'll have to mix this. But I just mix it with water. Um, 70.862 model color black gray. And so this is a really cool. So this is a really subtle, it's a really subtle gray. Um, and it does look gray, but when you leave like two thirds of the panel black, when we, when we drop a crisp edge highlight, um, it just looks good, I would say. Um, and the nice, and, and it's really like, you could, you could airbrush base coat, like a thousand points of guys in like two hours with this and be well on your way to getting stuff finished. Um, which is one of the things I really like. I mean, I knocked out that, <laughs> I know how to sell, I know how to sell you, Carl. Um, the, uh, like I painted that, um, ate that starter, those iron hands and like no time at all because all it was was going through airbrushing them black. I might have even done it over primer on those guys because it was just for the store and it was on an insane crunch because it was like, I don't know, a week before release or something. He got the box and was like, hey, I need this whole box painted by next week. Okay. So, um, again, when we're edge highlighting, we're just using the belly of the brush. We're not using the tip of the brush. We're making sure the paint is thin and we're not pressing because when we press, that's when we drop off too much paint. And if it starts to not show up, just go back, just go back and, and reload. And this neutral gray. Boop, boop, boop. And so when that dries, see that's not, hmm. It's not that white in person, I gotta tell you. Cause that's like pretty dramatic. And it's not, it's not that white in person. It's still like, it's a crisp highlight. I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow smoke. It's a crisp highlight, but that, hmm, that might be a little much. Let's try something else. Let's try. No, it's pretty white on screen. It's, it's a little light. It's a little light in person too. It's not white. That looks white. Um, but it's definitely a crisp high five. So let's see a crisp high five. I think this is going to be too light. That's going to be too light. That's going to be even lighter. Um, hmm. What if we use, what if we use this? What is this color? That's interesting. Oh, light green blue. That's a good I'm gonna figure out something to do with that. It's beautiful. Oh, that's duck egg green. Yeah, that, that color is amazing. It does look a bit Trump. Um, in person, it's a little less severe, I, I guess is the word. See, I think this is gonna be light. I think this is gonna be about the same. This is shadow gray.
Ooh, see, that's what happens when we press too hard. Yeah, that's getting, let me see. Oops, not that one. Let me see if I can bump this. A little. So that's less. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because on camera, no, that the the neutral gray was definitely was definitely a strong highlight. That was definitely a little too a little too much. Um, but the black gray is nice. But let's see what. <laughs> Let's see what dark gray does, and then we'll see what dark gray blue does. Um, it's hard because the oh yeah the um, those <laughs> better you than me, my friend. There's a reason I didn't jump on the Chaos Space Marine train. It's like wow, look at all that trim. Yeah, the fades the fades on a thousand suns show up really well because obviously because they're oops, so that did not show up at all. That dark gray. That's too dark. What's this gonna do? Dark that's gonna be too dark too. So it's just hard. You gotta find this you have to find this kind of happy medium between I want this to show up and I want this to be like not crazy as far as a highlight goes um it's tough because you know webcams and stuff like that they operate off contrast right so they operate off discerning dark from light so when you put something that light next to something that dark the camera is going to accentuate it um Cause it's not that I'll take some, I'll take some still pictures in like actual, I'll take some stills and I'll send it to you. Cause like that actually on top of there, that actually looks really nice. I like that a lot actually. That's with this game color, shadow gray, somber gray, somber gray, somber gray. I've been calling this paint the wrong color for three years. Uh, this is somber gray from Game Color, which is like a bluish. So that's where you're getting that kind of color interest is going to be from the highlight. Um, I actually really like that. On the top there, you can see that. Um, that's a valid concern about the gold. So let's just go real quick. I know you have to go, but real, real quick. Let's, and this is not a Sharpie, this is scale color dwarven gold, which isn't, <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, you know, whatever gets painted models on the table, table and do these painted box art with uh, Sharpie, so more power to you guys. Um, this isn't necessarily a gold that I would recommend for Black Legion because it's so warm. Um, I'd probably, I'd probably recommend a colder gold. Um, well, if that's going to be my advice, why don't we do that real quick? It'll take the same amount of effort as doing the warmer gold. telling you clearly I need to do <clears throat> clearly I need to do more prep than I did for this stream which was you know none so this is the necro gold from 
ne necrotic gold from scale 75. So, wish you had some ambient, that's harsh. Um, <laughs> oh, for the plane ride, not for the Twitch stream. Um, yeah, that's a that's a long flight. My brother lives in London. I haven't been to visit him, but whenever he comes, whenever he comes this way, it's like brutal. It's brutal. He's actually coming later this month, which is really exciting. Um, it'll be really good to see him. So, how long are you gonna be there? Like a week, two weeks, week and a half, a week. Well, that's like, I don't know. I feel like that's a rough amount of time to be there. Cause you're like, you're there long enough to kind of adjust to the time change a little. And then you fly right back. Like if you spend three weeks in Europe, you spend like four days acclimating and then you're cool for like two and a half weeks. But by the time you kind of get acclimated, you're flying home. That just... Not that I would poo-poo a week-long trip to, you know, Ireland and England, but that sounds, that sounds rough. I also drink a lot of coffee and don't sleep, so... Also not a gigantic fan of wine, but... The list goes on. My foibles so that's the necrotic gold necro gold negro gold dude the scale 75 is the truth i literally will never ever use another gold paint as long as i live uh knock on wood i don't mean that but as of th this moment today and as of like the last three years um scale 75 gold is all i use because because i could have dropped that right in the airbrush and just sprayed it that's how good it is um so that was the the necro gold so that's a really green that's a really green gold that's like this kind of greenish greenish gold um but we're gonna go in with Druchy Violet, which is kind of my go-to. Um, I might mess with this more if I were doing, you know, like when I did a Baden, I did, you know, I did a lot more steps to his armor, obviously, because he's, you know, the man. Um, so I went in with like greens and blues and, you know, did more, um, kind of some AP strong tone in, in the deepest parts to kind of do a matte versus satin type thing. And no, no, I wouldn't do all that on, um, I wouldn't do all that on 40. I would do it on 30. Uh, I do it on 30 Rubik's just for you, bud. Um, never again. Like, I'll probably never own Rubik rings. That's, that's sad. <laughs> uh, do I want to use Elven Gold? I think I'll use Elven Gold. Why not? What else? What are my other options here? Elven Gold and Viking Gold, but that's not, that's not really going to do what I want it to do. Um, Dwarven Gold's not going to get it done. Oh yeah, eBay and Barter Bucket, man. Barter Bucket is like the place to get one, one half-painted Rubik, Rubik Marine Squad and like 1,500 points, 1,000 suns, new in box. Um, I think just... So on the palette here, which by the way, palette from Redgrass Games, ridiculously good. I love this thing. Um, 
we have the elven gold and we have the neck the necro gold and then that's the dwarven gold that we started with that was too rosy you can see oops i'm gonna dump out my i'm gonna dump out my palette here let me block some of this light there we go so on the left is the elven gold on the top is the necro gold and then underneath that is a viking gold and you can see how red that viking gold is and that just wasn't working um for like white scars that's what i would do i would use that kind of reddish that would be dope um i'm worried that the elven gold is going to be too stark um just as a straight highlight but we're going to try it but we might end up just mixing the elven gold and the necro gold just a little bit to kind of tone down the elven gold but nothing nothing super scientific but um one thing i like about the druchi violet too is it dries matte so you can see it kind of it kind of matted that all down and so what we're going to do yeah we're going to mix that a little so this is going to be the mix about 50 50 of elven gold and necro Ooh, i like that Elven gold and necro gold. So then we're gonna come in and we're gonna leave that leave that druchy violet and everything in the wow, I'm using this isn't even close to a decent brush. Um that's okay. We're doing a color test. This isn't you know not trying to build a painting business or anything today. Um Why is that so out of focus? What happened? There we go. That's a little better. So that's with like a 50-50 mix with the Necro Gold and the and the Elven Gold in like the world's chunkiest highlight. I mean, this brush is annihilated. So don't judge my painting skill based on this color blocking. But I think... Let me just get the front of that there. I think that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good gold. I'm, I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, then, but if like if we were just to use Elven gold, which I'll do on this side here, I think we might get. I think we might get into Toontown a little bit. With just how clean. Elven gold is like a very clean gold color. Um, it's a very clean yellow gold. It's what I use for ultramarines. Um, but really, I mean, you could go with... So yeah, so you can see there like... The elven gold is just a... Yeah, the elven gold is also scale 75. Um, so you're looking at, you're looking at these two, Negro Gold and Elven Gold, because the other options are just too red. Uh, you could go with just Elven Gold. It would be like a cleaner, brighter gold. If you just did like, if you just did like a 50-50 mix with the Necro Gold, um, like above his head, I think is a better is a better representation than that weird scroll, that weird shapeless blob of skull scroll work on his chest. Right. Um, so above his head, but what I wanted, why I wanted to paint the gold, is because you can see that that black gray still looks you can still see it i can still see it in person i can still see the highlight but it looks black it doesn't look you know light gray it doesn't obliterate the highlight actually i really like that shadow gray there i think that's really good um Yeah, scale seventy fives are a game changer, man. Scale seventy five. I mean, if I just did, if I just did like elven gold over black, it might, it might cover okay. But like the 
the base, what I call the base golds, which are basically like Negro gold. Um, one of the ones while you're loading your, while you're loading your Amazon card, this is in the, so the decayed metal is I think in the brass set. I don't think it's in the gold set. It's been a while since I bought the set, but um, this stuff is absolute gold. Like this stuff is, this is one of my favorite paints in production of any company. So um, it's just super rich. It's like a classy tin bits is how I would describe it. Um, but so you can see, so that's just, Oh, Tin Bits was, you know, RIP Tin Bits. Uh, Tinny Tin is pretty close, but it's not as purple. Um, one, so the, what I was talking about on the stream was um, War Colors made a range of paints called Nostalgia 88. And it's all old Citadel paints in the white cap bottles in all the old recipes. So it's like snake bite leather and chestnut ink and tin bits and mithril silver and chainmail silver and um, titillating pink and slayer orange and goblin green and all those second edition colors they're like re-releasing in the original paint pots under the Nostalgia 88. And like the whole set is like 88 bucks. So I'm saving, I'm, I'm counting my ducats. That's on the list. Um, but that would, that would just be so cool. But anyway, um, the decayed metal I use more for, if I'm going to highlight up using like a redder gold or yellower gold, um, like custodies, the decayed metal is like the secret sauce. Um, this you could probably get away with because the decayed metal would really replace kind of the necro gold, but it would leave you with a much warmer gold, which I don't think you necessarily want. I think you want a cold gold for this. Um, if you were doing, I think this actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, see, all you have to do is like come on stream and be like, Hey, what about this? And I'll just, you know, paint it. Um, I don't think anybody wants to, wants to watch me make an airbrush uh, <laughs> recommendation PDF, but um, it's on the list of things to do. But so I think that black gray might be, I think this might be, if, if I think if you did this scheme, I think you'd, you'd be happy with the results in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, and yeah, I think the head and like the little chest piece there, I think those look really good with that gold. I'm focusing like if I'm doing this and covering up that little weird part in front of his face. So like the head in that little brow area and the gorget front part thing. And you can see, like, if we come back here, that's black. Black, black. But we still carry the edge highlight through to give it that look, to make it defined as black. Because, because it's black, you have to define it. Otherwise, it just looks, like, kind of mushy. Um, but that's black. And then you roll over, and that's, like, less black like a little bit more gray but it's not it's not like oh wow that's a gray raven guard you know it's oh no that's black it just yeah like yeah i mean it definitely It's, it's hard. It's hard to get like a, a black. Like it, it's deceptively hard to get like an interesting black. Um, and part of what I try to do is like the black 
doesn't really need to be the interesting part. Uh, but if you're painting iron hands or something, like you don't really have much else to go with. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, I didn't, I didn't find a red that I love for like armor until I did the ink glaze and like redid the highlights. But it, anyway. There will be a, there will be a Blood Angels tutorial while I go over that red and it's like this arterial like blood ink. I mean, it, you've seen my Heresy Blood Angels. They're ridiculously good. The the red is just like it's still saturated, but it does still have highlights. Um, yeah, the ghost that the ghost tint red is really good. What's even better? <laughs> What's even like, because the ghost tint red is still like pretty translucent by nature, is this stuff. Ink tense red, and it's pretty much, it may not be like that red, but it's pretty, because that's a little much, but it's pretty much that red. And it is translucent, but like, you'll see, I mean, you'll see. You've seen the Heresy Blood Angels that I did, but you'll see. Um, so we're going to cover up, we're going to cover up his little scroll work there. And just say, look at that. We did some Black Legion. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for being a good friend, and thanks for um, keeping me uh, keeping me on task tonight, and giving me something to do because I was uh, I was flailing. Oh, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, that, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Looking forward to, uh, looking forward to chatting with you when you get back. You know, I always love hearing your stories from, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I actually have like, you know, a computer set up now, so it wouldn't be a phone call, but yeah, I'll talk when you get back, man. Tell, uh, you know, tell shall I said hi and wishing her the best. And uh, it's always good to chat with you, buddy. All right, man. I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you when you get back. Safe travels. All right. So there we have like a Black Legion. That was cool. That was great to have Carl, Carl from uh, Independent Characters. Great to have him stop by. He is a patron and a very good friend of mine. Um, I've been promising to, to like show this black. He was like, Hey, do you, you know, I'm thinking I'm doing this black Legion. And I said, Oh yeah, you know, I got a black easy pro, you know, no problem. Black, uh, you know, three colors, easy peasy, um, get you where you need to go. Oh, great. And then like, you know, Time goes by, and you know, just I just hadn't. I tried to do it. What you saw at the beginning was like me attempting to. What was what was on the contender was me trying to like figure it out, and I, I just didn't have the right. It just wasn't going well. So, um, so it was cool for it was cool to come on and and figure that out when I was kind of flailing for something to do. But that looks pretty good, I think. That's a pretty decent... That's a good black. Like that, if I were doing Raven Guard, that would be the black that I would do. I would do that black for Raven Guard. Um, as for where we go from here, let me think. Because we still have, we still have a little time left, right? How much time do we have left? Let's see. We could do, we could try and figure out white scars. You want to try and figure out white scars? Let's try and figure out white scars. We did Black Legion. Let's do... Uh, 
we did black, let's see if we can do white, shall we? So we already have Do some spears. You know what? We're gonna dip. We're gonna dip into the personal stash here. Uh, we're gonna dip into the personal stash, and we're gonna do. I could spend thirty minutes painting for me personally, right? Let's, let's get this situated at airbrushing distance and just adjust the focus real quick and let her rip. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint a, Rege a Redemptor Dreadnought. Yeah. Whoops. Too far. The autofocus on this is absolutely trash. So I am forced to adjust manually as I go, which doesn't make for great television, but it results in a much still so It results in a much uh, better, much much better picture, much better quality. So, oh, the game is, no, that's not gonna work. Ooh, there we go. There we go. That's black. That's actually that color of blue. Perfect. Thank you for bearing with me tonight. I know it's been a bit of a mess. So uh, what we have here is a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought that has been painted black. And then I did, did one of the things about the Emperor Spears is they all have a blue knee pad um, for heraldry. So uh, eventually I will be doing either a transfer or some freehand or something on that pad. But that day will not be today. What we'll be doing today is masking that off so we don't, obviously, so we don't ruin it. Um, so we're going to mask off this knee pad and then this is the easy to build. Redemptor, um, which is a really cool kit. I think it's there. There are things that I miss about the multi-part pl plastic kits. I miss the bits. I miss the you know the variability, the poseability of you know like a stern guard squad or something like that. Um, but there are certain models like this one where for this loadout and for this dreadnought, um, this easy to build kit is really nice. And the fact that it's like 30 bucks versus, you know, or it's like 35 or something versus 60 for the multi part kit. Um, like, sure, I'll have a double, I'll have a Gatling Cannon and Fist Redemptor for 35 bucks, and, and these things are so cool to paint. Um, I painted one for my friend's store. My friend, uh, Jordan in Northern California, he owns a game, he owns a game store called Gamescape North, um, and he had me paint 
the eighth edition starter box for him uh, for Iron Hands, and then had me add had me add to it when the easy to build kits came out. So he had had me do a Redemptor and some Reavers. Um, and if I had stayed, I think I have some aggressors that I actually still owe him. But I think if I had stayed, I would have kept kept painting for him. Um, that's fine. I can live with that. But um, so it was really, really fun to paint the easy to build Redemptor Dreadnought. Um, so we just masked that off with you know little pieces of tape. And then when we're looking at it, we need to decide which how the how the final what's the final placement of this like arm gonna be, right? So if it's if it's gonna be back, then the highlights are gonna behave differently. If it's gonna be just straight to the side, the highlights are gonna be behave differently if it's you know held up for some reason. Uh, me, I like the kind of casual casual fist and then the, the leveled the leveled Gatling cannon um, I think for the for the standard pose I think this is really good um, it's pretty straight up and down but it still has a little it still has a little character so but what we're gonna do is is a technique called panel modulation um, which I'll go over, I'll be going over in depth at some point on the Patreon, and it's mostly used for, um, it's a technique that has made it the rounds on, you know, military modeling circles, um, for painting tanks and stuff, and it's, and it's designed, it's not necessarily the most realistic technique in the history of the world, um, but it is just getting a little dust off the top. Um, but it is going to create a lot of visual interest. Visually, it's very, very pleasing. Um, and so what it's going to do is really define the panels and really define the highlights on the Dreadnought. Um, and so the idea is that you're you're playing with light and you're playing with the panels in such a way that it looks shaded and it looks each panel kind of has its own thing going on, but it also works as a whole. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I start to do, when I start to do uh, the highlights. Uh, but for now, we are going to hunt down, whoa, for a screen. We're going to hunt down our colors, which are again. Oh, which are going to be again from uh, <clears throat> scale 75. Because when I so when I do my own. When I do my own projects and when I do my own um, armies and stuff, I really I try to push myself because I I don't get I don't get as much of a chance to do that on commissions just from an efficiency standpoint and from a, a replication standpoint. I don't want to do anything too crazy that's going to be Cantabric blue. That's one that sounds interesting. Um, that's that one. I don't want to do anything that's kind of too crazy. That's going to take. It's going to either be too hard to do over and over and over again, or it's going to be too hard to replicate later. Um, but when I'm doing my own models, I really, I really try to push myself. And see what I can do, see what I can kind of play around with. Um, 
when establishing kind of new color schemes or um, now I'm looking for Jordan Turquoise, which High roll blue, which is like over here somewhere. Um, there's high roll blue. Spend some of the if I were to mid, where would I be? That's the question. Nope. So, so anyway, so when I'm when I'm doing my own thing, I want I want there to be something cool and interesting and new. Um, and so I'll experiment. And one of the things I love experimenting with is is the scale 75 range because they do have such interesting colors. Um, so I'll go through and and just start kind of playing around with sparkling jade. Different colors and just kind of spraying them and seeing what happens and then I end up with the scheme that I like and run with it. There it is. Jordan Turquoise. How much time do we have? Oh, 12 minutes. Well, we'll see. We'll see how far we get. So, colors are going to be all scale 75. And then I'll go back and I'll do some white striping or detailing or something. Um, this Redemptor was originally painted in like kind of a um, Red Scorpions theme. I was I was thinking of doing Red Scorpions at one point. Um, so the colors we're going to use, so that's why that, there's like this ridge, there's like this kind of defect there. That's fine, we'll cover that. Um, Holdra Blue. Cantabric Blue, Jordan Turquoise, and then Hyrule Blue. And those look really similar under this light, but they're not, they're not that similar. Um, hmm, is that what I want to do right now? Or do I want to set the stage? Do I want to set the stage, set the stage, set the stage? I want these to be a little weathered. We're going to set the stage. So, when doing, you know, yeah. So, when we're doing weathering, I'm going to do a real quick. basic kind of this is like a little hack for doing chipping weathering it's kind of like it's kind of like the hairspray method but it takes way less time um so this is hull red oops hull red from vallejo model air this is a great dark brown to use uh, very reddish very reddish brown to use as a base for any any kind of weathering effect, rust effect. Because um, it just has this like really old rust kind of look to it. I don't know what's going on with my airbrush. This thing is, it's a good thing I didn't start doing base coats. Well, at least we got the Black Legion part of this done, right?
So we're just getting everything with the with the whole red. And actually, I'm going to take this masking off because it's going to look weird. It's going to look weird if there's one clean knee pad on the whole model. So we'll We're going to end up We're going to end up having to repaint that pad and that's okay cuz I think I went too light on it anyway. Dude, enough with the fog. I'm going to have to take this part of the I'm sorry, you guys. At least the Black Legion thing is cool. But this, uh... Not sustainable. So we just coat the whole model in whole red, and then next time to see what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking I'm taking the needle I'm back the needle up and taking the nozzle out and then I'm taking an old airbrush needle that is like wrecked. You know put that in there. And kind of push a little bit on the sides and kind of see what's going on in there. No, doesn't look like much. So that looks kind of okay. And then I'll take this and I'll pass some water through it that way. And that looks kind of okay. Maybe it got over what was ailing it. Um, so we're going to cover the whole model. And this is where you could do like salt. You could do salt chipping. You could do chipping fluid um, is another option that works well. But... We're going to come back. I need to, I need to prepare more for the next stage, but, um, as far as model prep go, that's fine. That's a nice coat of, of, uh, of whole red. And we don't want, because this is, this is going to be like old damage or excuse me, this is going to be kind of weathering. It's not going to be like Death Guard or something where it's like really bright orange rust. We want this kind of old um, underlying rust, the darker the rust. So we're not going to, otherwise we'd go through and we'd do like oranges and yellows and then we'd hit it with powders and all that, but we're going for something a little more subtle. So um, next time 
we're going to work on this. Uh, we're going to get this painted up. Um, we'll come back and do a weathering tutorial with this for sure, uh, with the Emperor Spears. So this is mine. So, um, look for that. I'll get it in the schedule. Uh, sorry, I wasn't more prepared tonight. I'm glad Carl, I, I'm glad Carl showed up and, um, gave me some direction and, and some chatting support. Uh, he's a good friend. So it's happy that we got to do that. So just a little model prep on the Redemptor, and then we did get a nice looking Black Legion scheme, black and gold, lined out for Carl. So um, hope you like the Twitch, or yeah, hope you like the stream. Um, next week will be better, I promise. That'll be a little bit more focused. Um, and, you know, live and learn. And moving forward, we'll, uh, I'll make sure that we have a plan going forward. So thank you for coming and uh, joining me on Twitch. Um, if you haven't checked out my Patreon, please do. Those are very focused. Those are very focused. Uh, and I was late because I was doing the uh, Facebook live chat over there that I'll do weekly on Sunday nights. Um, sit down with the $10 tier patron. And... Um, talk about plans for the week and, and what we've been working on and just kind of answering questions. So, um, hope to see you over there. Thank you for coming and, uh, and watching me on Twitch and have a great night. We'll see you soon.